saying body tactics. So I've taught QC in 40 countries all over the world, including third world countries. So Cape Town, South Africa, Manila, various other places, Thailand. Places where things could go fucking chilly. If, you know, if it went tits up, and I've been alone, and I've been with other people. The other people that I've been with, we always had a plan, three plans. So wherever we are, if we get a problem with anyone, first thing we're gonna to look to do is find the exit, right? If that problem is coming, we ain't negotiating, we're fighting quickly. And we're fighting as unfair as we can so that we can get the highest probability of success. So as an example, imagine there's me and Craig, right? And Craig's like-minded, he's already got this pep talk, and we're chatting and we're talking, and there's two guys over there that don't like the cut of our chips, they're giving us a problem, right? They're looking at us, so pre-threat you. Two guys here is just talking, right? But imagine two guys here, I'm gonna select you two. One gives you a hard stare, puts you up and down, and sit to his mate, and then they both give you a hard stare. And that's more information than that you need to know that you're about to have a fucking problem. This would be an understanding of pre-threat cue behavior recognized because you're switched on. So if you're so pissed you can't stand up, none of this applies, right? But if you are alert and switched on, I would say to him, you see the problem? You would say, yeah, so right, let's go. And if we could leave, we'd leave. But if not, and you two were coming, so let's say you two walk towards us, right? We're not gonna stand here and negotiate. Because now this is a two on two if it kicks off. And anyone could win, right? We know how this ends. So what we would do instead, as you walk towards us, he would immediately flank him, I would flank you, he would drop you, and we'd meet in the middle. Does that make sense? We'd use tactics. I'd say to you, as soon as this cunt closes, you flank him and smash him in the head, I'll do the same. Do you see how that works? Now, we ain't going two on two. We might go two on one of you, and then two on the other. Two on one, two on one. Unfair, I hear you say. There's no fucking rules here, mate, right? Now imagine this situation reversed. Instead of Craig, who can handle himself and would be on the same page as me, it's my wife's bird-watching cousin from Australia who I'm fucking escorting out as a babysitter for the night. And this cunt couldn't fight the tide in the bath, right? <laughs> now when these two come, I've got to protect him and fight two on one. Do you think they're going to be fair with me? <laughs> Absolutely not. So lose the idea of fair mindset and start to become tactical, right? So in this particular situation, Katrina's switched on like that and Craig is switched on like that, right? They come across a situation, I'll take you back your attention back to Dublin, where there was a maniac with a knife stabbing children in the prams and women that were trying to stop them. So as the mums were coming up, he was just fucking wailing at them. That's what this is, let's say, yes? Yeah. And these are two people walking through the park that could possibly do something about it. One, because they're switched on and recognise it. Two, because they've got some skills. Three, because they've got the mindset. And four, because they've got the general physical preparedness and love for, to preserve life. They still care. Do you understand? Because you're all going to do this drill, so watch what they do. The one's going to be back, the other's going to maintain the threat. Stay on the threat till he's unconscious. Make out you're pulling out phones and all the authorities. That's what you do. Go! 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 Right, so this would be one example of a simulation that I want you to do. Simple enough, you'll need to call for help. Right, you need to call for for to the authorities, yes? Whilst everyone's clear, once he's secured. One of the things that you might seek to do is bind him if he's unconscious. There's various ways in which you can bind him and secure him that's within this curriculum, which I don't have time to tell you now. But you are either going to detain or destroy. Do you understand? In the context of the situation in Dublin, it's destroy. But what you should do is, once the subject is down, rather than just reach for the phone, 
You need to purge the body, which means you need to check it, you need to search it. Now, if I rolled him over to search, what am I looking for? Okay. I'm looking for a secondary weapon, possibly, but what if I found comms, communications, such as radio, what would that tell me? Oh, it's got more friends, right? So they're the kind of things that you need to be aware of. In this day and age, you could have a vest on. You could have any number of things, but the degree is this is not safe just because he's not moving. For all I know, it could be a ruse. It could be playing possum. I need to make sure. So you would put his hands where you could see them. You would purge his pockets. You would take his wallet, his phone. Right? <laughs> check for weapons. Check to see if they didn't, and you would roll him over. Right? But the point is, just bear it in mind now. It doesn't end when he ain't moving, because if you get up with a secondary tool and pull out something else. You need to purge the body. You need to search for further weapons or comms, which would tell you there's another adversary in the immediate facility. And always expect that there is anyway. Yes? Good. All right, back on. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> Buckets down in the heat, and I want you to pile them up, and everyone else around them managing them. Does that make sense? Inside of the carnage, whoever's evacuating, pull the bodies clear. Whoever's making the call, make the call. Yes? And when you make the call, I want you to make the call where you actually are in this building. So you obviously know the address because you're here. Try and recall it. Now, I'm in such and such a gym in Birmingham somewhere. Yes? <laughs> right? Get ready! So, make an entrance, coming together. <coughs> make shouts and shit, I don't know, you will. Well. Stand by! Go! <laughs> Is anyone call their police? Authorities? Anyone call check them for injuries, please? Can you check the victims for injuries? Has everyone got them? Is there a doctor? Is there a doctor in the house? Are they breathing? Is there a Are they breathing? Yeah, they're conscious. Conscious. Check one more. Okay. Inside of this, if you immerse yourself, you will be mid-brain. Which means your subconscious brain is taking in what you're doing. You can't decide for between a real experience, a visualised experience, or a simulated experience. If you feel adrenaline and caught up in this in the moment, then you are immersed. That's really useful. Because now you are putting information on the disc, i.e. your subconscious brain, that's giving you an idea of what you could possibly do to mitigate damage in a dangerous situation 
if you were ever here. So before you just simulated such an event, how many of you has it had experienced for real that event? Put your hand up. I wasn't involved when I saw it. Huh? I wasn't involved when I saw it. You were there, you saw it visually? Yeah. Put your hand up. Right? Couple of people, more than I thought. Right? But nonetheless, when that happened, did you have a fucking clue what to do? Absolutely not. And right now, before what we just did, none of you have got a clue of what to do. Same as me, before I knew this, not a clue until I realized mm, what could help. Does that make sense? But now you have simulated this knowledge and not in a sterile setting where I'm just sat there in a classroom and telling you, you have actively got involved in it. Your subconscious brain has now taken that data and placed it on an upload. So your subconscious brain now has the information that should you ever find yourself in a situation like that, it has an option of what to do. That might be pull out your phone and film it. That might be phone the authorities quickly. That might be get that poor person to safety. Or that might be arm yourself and fight. But nonetheless, that information was not on your subconscious disc before I brought it to your attention. So know this. Your subconscious brain will always do what's best for you if it has the choice, <coughs> if it has the option. So if I've never explained that to you and you suddenly found yourself in that situation tomorrow, you'd probably just get fight or flight response, try to run, freeze, and you'd be in a state of hypervigilance. Because the subconscious brain only knows that as an option at that point. Does that make sense? But when you simulate a possible response to it, now you've got two options. You've got the previous option of freeze up and do nothing, or act. Does that make sense? Your subconscious brain cannot decipher the difference between a real event, a simulated event, or an intently visualized event imagined in your head, as long as it elicits an emotional response. And by emotional response, I mean an increase in your heart rate and a tad of adrenaline. Does that make sense? Now you are fusing the physical conditioning to such an event to the emotional conditioning. You are working your physical hardware and your emotional software in the same class. Does that make sense? Good. Right, we're going to do it again one more time. So now whoever was on the phone takes an active calling. Somebody evacuating the bodies. Something the rest of you fighting back. Two chair legs, yeah? The two black rubber cops. What is it? <laughs> Right. Yeah, big boy. <laughs> Stand by. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, we're watching the down the match. Yeah. 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 He's a victim. As soon as you hear, check, 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 it stops, right? Recognising silence, no matter how he goes. If you are called, boom, boom, when it's a nice and sharp, hit the deck. If you are called, stay down, right? So there's about three reps going around, just keep an eye. If you say back, you're down, listen, you're down. I want this to be a last man standing, really. Does that make sense? All last woman. Yeah, all last woman. It's not really going to do it. It's like a fluffy. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Stand by. This is war, right? Get your head on it. Get your head on it. Come on. Go, 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 go. Keep going! Come 
Stand quick two. Oh, oh, keep going. Get in there, Will. Why are you Thank <laughs> you.